Good evening, everybody. I'm uh, Tom McCoy. I'm the program chair for Ma DC. And uh, to, be to begin 2021, we've been very lucky to hear from several amateur myco mycologists from our sister club, the Western PA Mushroom Club. Last month, we heard from Judy McEnroth with an excellent overview on crust and polypores, and from John Plischke III telling us about his adventures mushrooming during the time of COVID. Tonight, we're going to continue that trend with another amateur mycologist from the Western PA Club, Ann Fluffberger, with a lecture about summer mushrooms. Yes, that's right. On a day when a famous groundhog said we're going to have six more weeks of winter, we're going to take a short break from the recent snow and cold uh, while we ponder some images of the warmer days to come. Uh, please join me in giving a warm welcome to Ann Fluffberger. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, let's just take a short visit this evening in our minds to a perfect summer day outside because summer is one of the richest and most rewarding times to take a hike. What is it about hiking that draws us? Of course, well, it's good exercise. And I know for me, I wanna know what's around that next corner. What's over that hill or down by that rock there. And you know, the breathing deeply and limbering up our joints, being aware of where we put our feet the sun, the smell of the air, beauty, family time, good conversation with friends are all part of what draws us to the woods. Now, for those of you who may just be beginning to learn about fungi, or for you hikers who wonder what that thing on the tree might be as you power on by, I hope that you will include a new concept into your summer visits to the woods. Slow down. Because easing your pace gives you more time to observe. Look off to the side of the trail. You're going to pick up on glimpses of color or patterns you can't see when your eyes are fixed only on the trail. It now can be a challenge at first, to check your footing a few paces ahead and then turn your focus into the woods and then back to the trail for a few more paces and then back to the woods. But slowing down and scanning the areas beside the trail becomes quite rewarding. Of course, you'll see the summer fungi we're gonna highlight, but there is so much more to see that really increases the joy of hiking. Now, that being said, we're now going to focus on the following summer mushrooms, chicken of the woods, oysters, chanterelles, black trumpets, boletes, amanitas, and corals. Chicken of the woods, also called sulfur shelf, is probably the easiest fungus to identify. When fresh, it forms overlapping orange brackets or shelves with bright yellow edges and undersides. It mostly grows on dead logs, but is sometimes found on damaged areas of living trees as well. It is edible and most palatable when young and fresh. It keeps its bright colors when it's cooked. And as it grows older, it begins to fade and the brackets thin out and become more ruffled. The texture becomes more like chewing on an overcooked, dried out piece of chicken, or maybe even like damp wood. Then it becomes bug infested and it continues to fade to a, a dirty white and then finally crumbles from its place on the log. The Latin name, Latiparus sulfurius, calls attention to the brilliant yellow underside of this photogenic fungus using the name of that equally yellow mineral sulfur in the species name. Notice the zones of lighter and darker orange in this older specimen here. That zonation is very common. There are no poisonous lookalikes for this mushroom as long as you match the description of the top and the bottom. And there are so many harvesting instructions and recipe ideas for this on the internet. You can really spend a day just doing that. So, what if you find this? 
It does look very similar to Chicken of the Woods, except that it's missing those yellow edges and undersides. Well, congratulations, you have found white Chicken of the Woods. It is every bit as edible, and in my opinion, it's better tasting than its yellow cousin. Its Latin name is Latipera cincinnatus. It grows at the bases of oak trees or from buried roots. So this chicken might seem to be growing from the ground. Another easy and tasty treat to look for in the summer forest is the oyster mushroom or oyster mushrooms, I should say, since they're often, uh, they often grow abundantly from fallen trees or standing dead wood. Oyster mushrooms are white or beige or pale tan on top with white gills underneath the cap that grow from the edge of the cap down the short stem. Oysters are among my favorite edible mushrooms because they're easy to identify and harvest. Just give them a little thump or two with your fingers to dislodge little beetles and then just pull or cut them from the wood. They're easy to clean under a thin stream of water in the sink and then let them drain on a towel as you get ready to cook them. Again, check the internet for recipes. Now, as these get older, they get very buggy and, and droopy and very slimy. Now, while oyster fungi don't have true lookalikes, this little species here called Crepidotus might fool you if you haven't already seen many oysters before or if you're just starting out. So here are the differences. Creps are much smaller than oysters. They're about as wide as a slug is long. Uh, you can see it up here on the, the photo on the top there. Um, instead of a stem, they have this little nub that attaches to the wood. From the upper side, that nub looks like a large dot at the base of the cap. While the gills may start out whitish, they soon turn brown with spores unlike those lovely white gills of oysters, which remain white. If you do make a mistake though, and cook these up, your very first disgusting bitter bite will convince you to throw them out. And now the winner of the summer fungi popularity contest, chanterelles. In a good year, they are abundant, easy to spot and they grow for weeks. They're beautiful and tasty. Several of our club members here in Pittsburgh have created hope cuisine with these things. They've pickled them, they have smoked them, sauteed, baked them, and, and so much more. Here's how to recognize chanterelles. First thing that's gonna catch your roving eye will be their color, some shade of orange, yellowish orange to very vibrant orange. Uh, they're so brilliant against the green or the brown of the forest floor. They will be growing on the ground. You remember chickens and oysters grow on logs. Chanterelles won't have that. They grow only on the ground. Now I find this ruffled species here quite often. They, they remind me of weird flowers without leaves. Thirdly, chanterelles have no gills or pores under their caps. Let's look a little more closely there. Instead of gills or pores, chanterelles have ridges where their spores are produced. They may seem finely wrinkled or even absent, leaving the undersides comparatively smooth. If they seem to have regular blades uh, like gills, um, they're gonna be hard and forked and unmovable, unlike gills, which of course are flexible or soft. One more important feature of the chanterelle is the white interior, the meat of the mushroom. You can see on this photo, the areas where the cap has been scratched, the white interior shows through. Now, though chanterelles don't really have a lookalike, so many eager new mushroom hunters every year ask, are these chanterelles? They're orange and they're growing on the ground. So we have a teachable moment. We take a good look under the cap and we discover those lovely orange, flexible, soft, 
gills, which we point out are never a feature of chanterelles. Then we'll use our handy pocket knife and we'll slice across the cap to find that the interior of this mushroom is also orange rather than white like a chanterelle. These are jack-o'-lantern mushrooms and they are poisonous. Not deadly, but I've heard that it's a very intensely awful experience that you just have to endure until it's over and it takes about four hours from what I hear. So always be sure that the mushrooms you wanna eat match the description completely to avoid some ugly consequences. Moving on. The first thing that catches your eye, if you're lucky about black trumpets, is that you might think you're seeing holes in the ground. But then you look again and you realize they're not holes, but there's something. What? They look like little trumpets. And so stop and look carefully, get down low because there are probably quite a few of them. And it's a good thing too, because they're small to medium sized fungi. And they really, they're really delicious. They have a unique flavor that's even better after they're dried and rehydrated. Black trumpets are wonderful, made into a dip, which disappears quickly at our forays. You can make ice cream with these. You can flavor vodka. You can add them to scrambled eggs. There are just loads of ways to enjoy them. Best of all, they have no poisonous lookalikes. Now, moving on to the bolete family, they won't all show up here. There are hundreds of different kinds of bolets. And they all share this. They have a cap and a stem. And under the cap, you're gonna find pores, which are actually tubes like millions of straws tightly packed side by side. In those tubes, the mushrooms spores develop and mature and they're expelled from the pore at the bottom of each one. As your eyes are wandering alongside the trail, see if you can catch sight of these four beliefs. Old man of the woods. This has a shaggy stalk and gray to black woolly scales on its whitish or light gray cap. And that cap sometimes has pinkish tinted spots as well. The pores underneath are dirty white and they become black as the mushroom ages. If you slice the cap from the top to the bottom, you'll be able to see the tubes lined up under the flesh of the, of the cap. Now the, the flesh will turn pink or reddish as, um, as, as it, I wanna see, as you spend a little time looking at it, how's that? and eventually it will turn black as well. Now, Old Man of the Woods is edible and, and it is quite meaty, so it has a good amount of substance to it, but you're gonna have to decide if you like it for yourself or not. The bicolor bully has reddish and yellowish colors on both the cap and the stem. The bicolor bully is fairly common in our region the pores are yellow at first and they become kind of a dull yellow olive brown color as the spores mature. These are also edible when they're young and solid, but don't eat too much at first because some people can't digest these too well and they'll, you know, they'll upset your stomach. Uh, bicolors will get soft and buggy pretty quickly. And that of course makes them kind of unattractive for eating, they get smushy. The pore surface on these mushrooms will turn grayish blue if you gently draw a fingernail across it. And that stain will slowly turn black. <coughs> Excuse me. This next one is such a heartbreaker. Look at that. It's so handsome. It's firm, robust. Note that attractive reticulation there on that yellow tan stem and the pale pink blush on those white pores. You can just tell that this is gonna be fabulous in the kitchen, but alas, it cannot be. For this is Tylopolis bellius, the bitter bullet. So just for fun, take a nibble of this cap when you find this in the conifer woods. The gills um, may have turned a dull pink with mature spores, but go ahead, see how long that you can stand the awful bitterness and that it cannot be cooked away. 
but do always, always spit it out no matter what. I don't think you're gonna have to be told twice though. That it gets its name, honestly. Oh, one of the most rewarding summer fungi finds is the fabulous frost bolete. If you're lucky, you'll be able to find a pristine specimen with a candy apple red cap, red pores, and a deeply reticulated stem. The slightest touch, however, will create a black bruise on any part of this fussy princess of the fungus world. This mushroom is supposed to be delicious, but you know, I've never found enough at one time for cooking. So I hope you're able to see one of these this year. Okay, let's change families. We'll see a few lovelies from Amanita now. Some of the most notorious mushrooms belong to this family. Here's one you're probably going to see this summer. It's got that pure, unchanging white cap, the gills and the stem. It is deadly poisonous to eat. This is one mushroom to familiarize yourself with today if you haven't already. The destroying angel also has a white ring near the top of the stem and a white sac called a vulva at the base of the stem. Now the vulva is often hidden underneath leaf litter. For any Amanita, it's important to brush away that leaf litter and kind of dig it underneath the base of the stem to check for this important feature. This one, this tall, stately Amanita, Amanita, it's called a blusher, and it's pretty common in our area as well. The identification feature that stands out is the fact that the blusher is easily bruised. Any part that's pressed or scratched blushes reddish. Since the forest is a busy place, these fungi usually already have several reddish stains when you find them. Now the name is in process, I understand. Um, it has been called Amanita rubescens, but it does differ uh, in the DNA. So it is, the name's being changed to Amanita amira rubescens. Our final cap and stem mushroom for this evening is the beautiful and iconic Eastern fly agaric. It grows in both conifer and hardwood forests. The cap is orange to yellow with white scales. And like all Amanitas, the gills of the fly agaric are white. Instead of a sac at the base, the fly agaric has bands of tissue around a swollen or bulbous base. The size and color of this gorgeous mushroom makes it easy to spot, and there are often several growing in the same area. As you may know, the western fly agaric has a red cap with white scales and often appears in children's storybook illustrations. Lastly, maybe the best reason to slow down and look around is to behold these unexpected and unusual fungi, the corals. Contemplate how something that clearly seems to belong in an aquarium is so lavishly growing on a log or from the ground. One coral you'll see for sure is crown tip coral. It grows in sprigs and clusters on fallen logs. Each dull white branch is crowned with a, well, crown, it's worth taking a break to stop and look closely to see the crowns. Slugs love to eat the crown tips off. And there's one chomping away in the photo on the left. And crown tip coral is edible for people too. It doesn't have much flavor, but it's a fun novelty on your plate. In the large and diverse Romeria family is this gem, Romeria formosa. When they're young, these firm and tight clumps of branches are pink to coral to golden yellow to orange, and all that color fades to tan with hints of yellow or orange. Notice how much more crowded the branches are on this coral than, than they were on the crown tip coral. It doesn't, uh, sorry, um, it is not edible. In fact, it's mildly poisonous and it will cause this polite term, gastric upset. Not to be outdone, the Claveria family 
has a contender for the prize of most colorful summer fungus. Claveria zolingeri is a gorgeous purple when it's shiny new. It too will fade to a lighter, duller purple as it matures. Typically it grows in small clumps in the moss on the forest floor. Not, not enough to collect for cooking, but that's just as well because the jury's still out on whether it's poisonous or just not worth eating. So thank you all so much for sitting with me through this short visit to summertime. I hope you're all able to find the mushrooms that we looked at this evening and even more as you amble along the trails out there. Thanks.